Ja, velkommen til Forum i dag, her fra Forum Kino i Bergen. Norge dags ukentlige TV-program. Takk til våre seere som følger oss hele tiden, og som også leser avisen vår, og støtter det vi gjør på på mange, mange fronter. Takk for at du er med oss i dag. Vi har med oss en helt spesiell gjest som er godt kjent for mange av Visjon Norge seere, og Norge dags lesere, nemlig pastor Mark Sartin fra Florida. Welcome, Mark. It's my privilege to be here. Thanks for having me again. It's always my joy. Yes, and it's not the first time you are. Uh, you're. Uh, no, this isn't. Is this maybe your tenth trip or so to Something Norway? Something like that. I'm really enjoying being here, and God is just doing some awesome things. And before the year 2009 or so, you hadn't set foot in this country at all. That's true. About five years ago, I had never been here. Yeah, and everything has changed since that time. Now yeah. I get to be here quite a bit. Yeah, uh, a lot of our viewers know the story. Quickly, tell the story about how Norway... Uh, it's a great story, and uh, but I can say it very quickly. You came actually to visit the Orlando area, uh, Googled a uh, church nearby, and our church came up. You came and visited, said, I, I think you should come to Norway. That happened uh, a couple of times that you visited. The third time, you said, I, I really think you should come to Norway. Would you at least pray about it? That time, I did. Uh, when I got on my knees that night, uh, God just began to do something in my heart that has never retracted. Uh, just powerful. God poured Norway into my heart, a, a deep love, a compassion. And uh, still to this day, every time I step foot on Norwegian soil, it is like coming home. No matter where I go, it's like being home. And so uh, I, I love it. And, and God is doing some exciting things here. So it's a privilege to be back. Thank you for insisting that I pray about it. Well, I'm very glad that I did, and I'm glad that you were obedient. Now, uh, uh, last year, uh, we all did something very special. Uh, Burn for Allah, yes. prayer for all. Uh, tell us how that came up. You know, uh, I guess it was about three years, a little over three years ago, I woke up with a vision about it. Over a period of two or three days, I got the rest of the vision and uh, till it was all, all complete. I shared it with you. You're the first person I shared it with and said, I think this is what the Lord wants us to do. Would you please pray about it? And uh, over a period of months, you and I came into agreement on it. We both felt like it was something the Holy Spirit wanted us to do, although it was an enormous task, um, especially in the way that it sounded at that time. But uh, having had the steps of the way it came together, it did come together very naturally. And we had almost the exact number of people that I had a sense would sign up. It, it took uh, everything that uh, I saw in the vision uh, played out about the amount of time that it took for people to pray and everything. And this year, it looks like it's going to increase considerably. We have a lot of people who want to join us this year. 5,000 people signed up. I remember we were, doing right. this, uh, we were doing this in June, and we had, uh, we had done every effort that we had. We talked about it at our Norgi Dog conference. Yes. And we had about uh, 1,000, maybe 1,500 That's people right. signed up. And then uh, the, it all just took um, fire when we came in August and we did this uh, uh, push on Vision Norge. Yes. And 5,000 people signed up to pray for every household, every person in Norway. That's right. We prayed, literally, we covered every household by name in this country. And it has made a difference. I had a sense that it would raise the spiritual tide. I had no idea of the impact that, it would ha that this could have. Uh, the people who are watching uh, kind of the scene of Christianity in Norway, they see several things uh, happening at the same mm -hmm. time. We just had uh, uh, Todd White visit Bergen uh, a few wee weeks ago. That's right. And, and in, a, in a very different way than we've had in many, many years, it really shook that church and this city. Um, then we had uh, Apostle Maldonado yes. uh, come to uh, Eastern Norway, and uh, with obvious everything, all this is televised, and uh, is shaking Norway again, uh, and uh, a lot of strong testimonies about what go God's doing. And then we hear there's rumors that people are thinking about inviting uh, Reinhard Bonnke and yes. inviting Franklin Gray and Billy Graham's son. Um, is there a connection with what Norwegian, 5,000 Norwegians did you in know, the fall and I, what's going on now? I can't draw a straight line, but I do think there's a connection. I think that when we pray, when we, we, we were obedient, God said, uh, I, I want to change. I want to raise the spiritual tide. 
And, and now we begin to see this. And I do know that we're just, uh, others have been praying and others joined us in this prayer. And as the tide of prayer, I think we can directly connect it to that. As this tide of prayer increases, we pray for every household across the nation. I'm so excited because men, like you just mentioned, are feeling compelled themselves to come to this country. So that tells me God's doing something in this time. Uh, we also, I forgot in my list of events that, that are important, uh, one of our missions organizations, Mishun Sambana, uh, reported that they are seeing people saved in all their schools. Oh, and, wow. and not just in one place, but in you know, different, different areas of the country. Yes. And uh, I bet people are telling you uh, that they feel strongly that there is a connection. They are. He I'm hearing that everywhere. I, I can't, without any doubt, make the connection. Um, in my soul, but in my spirit, I know there's a connection. I know it's real, and people sense that. And then one of the things that happened is that there is this powerful life change that happened in the people who signed up to pray. Not only was this an investment they did, but the kinds of things that are happening in their lives and in their families are, are profound. I hear, I've heard many testimonies now of people who said, Pastor Mark, this changed my life. I'm a different person forever. And those are the most, those are the most powerful testimonies to me. And I have heard them by the dozens people have told me that. In the, uh, in the campaign, everybody gets a list. Uh, mm -hmm. Last year, we were about 5,000 people, about 5 million Norwegians, we needed prayer. So about a little less than a thousand uh, per person, yeah. uh, and and people get the lists, and some of the and they had about a month to pray through them, mm -hmm. and some of them are still praying for their list. You know, I've heard uh, most people have approached me and said, "I love my list. I am still praying for these people over and over again. They are now a part of my regular prayer life," and so I think that's exciting that the people on those the list of those individuals, and I've heard that many times. Uh, are being prayed for over and over again. Someone is calling their name before the Lord, and it is making a difference. There might be some viewers out there uh, mm -hmm. uh, that are thinking, this is exciting. I haven't heard about it before. I have heard not so much. Uh, and if this is going to happen again in the fall, I want to be a part. And it will. Yes. Tell them what what is all going down. A couple of things. First of all, it's not as big, not near as daunting as it sounds. It actually does not take as much time as you may think. The Holy Spirit gave me a very clear way that we're supposed to pray. And it's not really that long. And we communicate that to you. You'll know exactly how to pray for every name. And you'll be able to do it very quickly. And then we ask that an individual, when the Holy Spirit, they'll learn to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, to pray a little extra for certain families. And... Uh, when that is sensed, then we just we spend a little extra time praying for those until we feel the, the burden lifted. And uh, each person that signs up to help us will receive a list. We believe there will be between eight and maybe 10,000 who will help us this year. And so that cuts the list by about a third, we're guessing. That means that it won't take nearly as long as uh, as it did. And people were surprised it really didn't take as long as they thought that it would last year. Because if you do this every day, mm -hmm. uh, we were at about 30 names a day. Right. Now you can go through 30 names and you know pray for them in a real way within just a few minutes. In just a few minutes. And next uh, next time maybe we'll be at 20 names a day. Right. That's correct. And it really does just take five or so minutes a day, no more than 10 minutes. And uh, like I said, then if there's a, a special highlight by the Holy Spirit, the person can just take that name in their heart. Uh, the most exciting to me are the individuals that have come to me and said, something has happened to me. My life has changed. Um, and I've heard that a number of times. So God's at work. Good things are happening. I had the privilege uh, earlier this year, and this is exciting news, to, I was invited to join the directors. Uh, we might refer to them as the national prayer leaders. They lead prayer groups of various sizes all across this country. And they're some of the most precious people in the world. And there's not a whole lot of accolade given to people who lead prayer groups. These people did. 
and God moved and all of them made the decision and the commitment to invite their prayer groups to be a part of what we're doing. What they realized is that this not only helps Norway, but this helps raise up people who pray, intercessors, in their own groups, in their own churches. Their groups expand. And so we all um, move further toward the goal in this. Uh, this October, we're doing it again. Yes, we are. And we are inviting people to go to the website yes. uh, and sign up. So the website is benforala.no, and they just give us uh, uh, their uh, name, address, and so forth. And then we distribute the list. Some get it in the mail. Some get it uh, electronically. And, uh, and the thing about something like that is, uh, in Norway, we have a word that's called dugnad. And it's and it's it's a part of our very part a big part of our culture and I identity. It's about cooperation mm -hmm. that you do st stuff together without getting paid, but when we pull together, we can do stuff uh, and make stuff happen. Amen. Uh, and that's what we do in sports, and that's what we do in uh, in our home subdivisions. We get together and we set up a day, and this is Dugnad, wow. and 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 that's what this is, and that's why I think it's working so well. Uh, in uh, Nehemiah, there's a book, uh, there's a, a chapter when Nehemiah is rebuilding the wall. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's chapter two, and he lists all the people yeah. who are doing uh, an yes, important job. Yes. Uh, and I, I've been thinking that, uh, that that makes sense for a time like this. I mean, God is interested it in does. not just the guy who's in charge, uh, right. but everybody who's involved and building their little piece of that wall. I ran across one more item, if I could share really quickly, that goes right with what you just mentioned, and it's in First John. You know, they really prayed a lot for each other. There was a tight community of Christians. And John talks about the importance of praying for each other. And sometimes there's this casual approach to Christianity. And that's been a problem in Norway. And he gives special direction to pray for those who he talks about are in sin that does, that's not immediately unto death. And what he promises is this, that we can pray for that person and it will make a difference. I believe that's one of the strongest biblical promises that we have for this prayer, that when you pray for someone, those names on your list, you are praying, and that prayer by the Scriptures will make a difference. There will be people who will cross the finish line in Christianity because someone else, like those you were inviting to sign up, prayed for them. It makes an eternal difference. It really does, and God's Word says so. So this October, we're doing it again. Uh, if, uh, if, if it's God's will, we'll keep doing this until He comes back. That's right. And, uh, and wonderful stuff can happen. And we'll keep celebrating too. Yes, we had a great celebration. <laughs> we had an awesome celebration. It was on the American Thanksgiving Day in the latter part of October. We want to do that again and invite everyone who participates with us. We had such a great time last year, and we will again this year. All right. Well, thank you for being in our show. We'll we'll look forward to thank uh, you for the privilege to all the news job. ahead. Yes. Då har du alltså fått det uppfordringen är att gå in på bönforalle.no. Du kan allerede nu registrera dig för hösten och så är det så att du ska be. Du får tillsänt en list i posten eller på e-post. Alla helst e-post. Det är gratis för oss att sända ut och så får vi in den information från dig. Du får tillsänt en list när vi närmar oss oktober måne. Och så ska du be för. Vi hoppas det blir kanske 20 namn per dag. Det klarar du eh, väldigt väldigt lätt och så om det skulle gå någon dagar och du tränger att samla dig upp så går det också väldigt väldigt bra. Och vi har alla gjort det, alla som är med här i Norge idag och alla sammen har vär sin lista och vi har bett igenom den i oktober månad och det har varit en del av det som vi tror Gud gör i Norge och som är väldigt väldigt spännande som gör att människor blir frälst. Eh, bön för alla där registrerar du dig och så håller vi kontakten med dig ute var. Följ med på dessa sändningarna, följ med i Norge idag, följ med på Vision Norge och så tror vi att vi är med och verkligen gör en skill i landet vårt. Tusen tack för att du följde den delen av sändningen. Nu får du Speakers Corner. Varje vecka får vi rapporter från den världsvida väckelsen om män och kvinnor som blir frälsta och tar emot Jesus över hela landet vårt. Läs historierna i avisen Norge idag. Bestill på 55 92 29 00. Bestill i dag. Islam är inte Norges fundament. Då är det kristendomen som är som känt och det har det varit i tusen år. 
Och i löpet av dessa tusen år så har Norge blivit ett eh, väldigt gott och tryggt land att bo i. Vi har fått välstånd, vi har goda regler eh, som gäller med mänsklig och vi har ett välsmurt och välfungerande samfunn. Detta ger ju då att vi också får en eh, ström av flyktingar från land som inte är eh, er så välfungerande, som kanske kommer från land men ett ant fundament och en an ideologi som ligger till grund för deras samfund. För det att de ser att här är det gott att bo. Och grund till att vi har det gott, det är att vi är ett samfund byggt på kristna grundvärderingar. Men nu är det ju så att politikerna eh, som styr idag inte alltid ser värdien av den arven som landet vårt är er byggt på. Och detta ger sig nog en märklig utslag. Bland annat så har vi bynt och sanna förbrytare till moskéer för rehabilitering. Och detta är er något som var helt nytt för mig. Jag blev ganska överraskad när jag läste om det. Eh, det var nämligen en gutt eller en man som i januari 2012 ranade en 7-Eleven kiosk i Oslo. Och på den tiden där så var han inte muslim. Men efter kvart så kom han i kontakt med muslimska grupperingar och konverterade symbolisk nog på 17 maj på vår nationaldag i 2013. Så när då saken han skulle upp för retten senare på året, hösten 2013, så blev han dömd till samhällsstraff. 400 timmar samhällsstraff och med genomföringsperioder på halvanna år. Då han allerede började komma i kontakt med radikala eh, muslimska miljö och lika väl då så dömer retten han till att göra den samhällsstraffen i en moské. Och eh, då fortsatte då för han sån att han blir bara ytterligare radikaliserad och eh, kommer I, I kontakt med ända starkare eh, islamistiska extrema grupperingar i Oslo området. Och resultatet är er tragiskt både för han och för familjen och för det norska samfund. För det ända med att han reste till Syrien som IS-kriger efter att eh, norska myndigheter har dömt han och han har sunt sin samhällsstraff i en moské, så drar han till Syrien, kriger för eh, den islamske staten, den värste terrorgruppen vi har sett någon gång. Och han ger sitt liv i kampen mot ikke muslimer. Och det ända med att familjen hans får besked om att nu har gutten död som IS-kriger. Så det är er tragisk utfall för alla parter. Det är er ingen som tjänar på att samhället uppträder på denna måten. Ulyckligt nog så upphever vi grundlagens paragraf 2 som sa att Norge ska vara ett kristet land. Men själv om denna paragrafen inte är er tydlig längre så innehåller han framdeles en bestämmelse om att vi ska bygga på kristna och humanistiska värderingar, inte islamska värderingar. Grundidén med samhällsstraff är er att man ska bli tillbakaförd till det norska samhället. Då fungerar det inte att en förbryter får sin samhällsstraff i ett miljö som bygger på en ideologi som konkurrerar mot det norska samhället när det gäller värdegrundlag. Detta ger sig följligen oheliga konsekvenser och detta är er något vi måste ta upp. För samhällsstraffen i moskén det är er inte tragisk. Norska myndigheter, de har haft en en tro på en slags utopi och multireligiositet och multikulturalisme att vi ska leva samman i ett fargerikt fällskap och när det gäller kultur så syns jag att det är er positivt att vi kan vara olika men vi är er nött att bygga på det samma värdefundamentet. Jag syns vi ska se lite mer till USA som klarar att integrera eh, invandrare och nya borgare så att de blir amerikanere. 
For det vi opplever nå i Norge, det er at vi sier at nei, du trenger ikke å bli nordmann, fordi at eh, det, er ikke, det er jo ikke noe bedre enn noe annet. Så du kan bare være eh, eh, sånn som du er, sånn som ditt land er bygd på, og så kan du kjempe for dine verdier, selv om de går imot det norske samfunnet. Så kan vi ikke ha det, det er ikke bærekraftig, og det fører Norge i feil retning. Hvis du vil være med og stå opp imot denne samfunnsutviklingen som vi ser nå, så skal du høre at det skal være en stor solidaritetsmarkering med jødene og Israel. Israel er det eneste demokratiske landet i Midtøsten. Og vi som nation har motarbeidet Israel opp gjennom historien. Og dette er jo en skamplett for Norge, men vi som et kristne folk må stå sammen og vise at vi støtter Israel. Og det kan vi gjøre søndag 10. mai kl. 15-17 på Eidsvolds plass eh, i Oslo. Så skal det være en, en stor fellesmarkering. Og det som er unikt med dette arrangementet, for vi har jo mange i Israels arrangement, men her mobiliserer vi veldig bredt. Det kommer omtrent 70 kristenledere og pastorer fra forskjellige sammenhenger, og eh, det skal gå en felles marsj til Rådhusplassen, og der vil det være markering med appeller eh, og sang og musikk. Og av de forskjellige som deltar, så skal eh, Sten Sørensen være der, eh, kjent fra blant annet Troens bevis, og vi får appell ved Hans Fredrik Røvan, som sitter på Stortinget for KRF, Eh, eh, Siv Jensen, eh, selveste finansministeren, skal være der eh, og holde appell. Og Israels ambassadør, Rafael Schultz, han vil være der. Og eh, en arabisk pastor som støtter Israel, står opp for, eh, står opp for eh, de gode verdiene. Salem Shalash heter han, han skal være der. Så kommer Dag Øyvind Juliusen, som er direktør for IKAI, og mange, mange flere. Og hvis vi klarer å slutte opp under dette arrangementet og vise at vi er mange, så kan vi være en motmobilisering mot det som vi ser i dag. Vi ser en uheldig union mellom sosialisme og islamisme. Vi ser at, so at sosialistene skyver islam foran seg, og eh, det går imot de kristne verdiene. Men nå skal vi stå opp, vi skal støtte Israel, vi skal vise at Norge er fortsatt et kristent land, og vi står for de verdiene. Og noen eh, plasser i Norge i dag, så vil det være veldig kontroversielt å vise et Israels flagg, men det skal vi gjøre den dagen. Mitt i hjertet av hovedstaden vår. Så der vil jeg oppfordre deg eh, til å komme. Det blir en stor fest, og det er veldig godt å være der, og kjenne at vi er mange, og at vi står sammen. Så til slutt så må jeg oppfordre deg til å abonnere på Avisa Norge i dag, hvis ikke du gjør det. Det er den eneste avisa i Norge som ikke får pressestøtte. Og du må støtte opp under den avisa som står fast på de kristne verdiene. Så da kan du ringe nå på 55 92 29 00.